in June 1948, Joseph Stalin's USSR cut off access to Berlin to the Western Allies. This was the start of nearly a year of blockading Berlin, of a dramatic airlift and an open confrontation between the West and the USSR. It wasn't the best PR move by Stalin, to be fair, but that was never really his strong point. The Berlin blockade. Let's find out what happened and why. And welcome to Free Teacher. Bong bong bong, street 240 and a half, Phnom Penh. Also, I'm having my breakfast at Artillery, just next to um, Bong Bong Bong. And I really do like this place. It's healthy. Before we do get on to the Berlin blockade, we're also going to have to look at Germany. What was it about Germany? You need to understand this before you can really get a handle on Stalin's actions. And that's not to make him out to be a saint. It's really, really, really not. Okay. I'm going to go back to my village and talk about Germany from a derelict room full of old arcade machines. Today we're going to do the Berlin blockade, that was it, the Berlin blockade and airlift. But first of all, just check out what Vesna, this guy, has been doing. What a man. Went there this morning and he shows me that. I, know, I like it. So we're going to look at the Berlin blockade and airlift. And in order to do that, in order to understand the Berlin blockade and airlift, we're also going to examine Germany. What the problem was between the United States and the USSR as far as Germany goes, while not forgetting that they were never really friends. So apart from the fact that the West had sent troops into the USSR during the Civil War to fight against communism, let's just look at the situation at the end of World War II. What was the problem with Germany? Well, basically, the Second World War had been fought to get to Berlin to beat Germany, to beat Hitler, um, at least from their point of view. And so both sides saw it as the prize, of course, but really both sides wanted a Germany that was friendly to them. And remember they've got opposing ideologies. They wanted a Germany that was friendly to them. The USSR had been attacked by Germany for the second time in not very much time and wanted to make sure that, in fact, they were terrified, I think, terrified of a reunited anti-communist Germany with nuclear weapons. They feared it would be used against them. The West, on the other hand, didn't want Germany, which was, again, it was ruined at the time, but everybody knew what a powerful nation it had got the potential to be. So, both sides wanted a Germany, on their side. Both sides, in a way, were scared of a Germany or were very wary of a Germany that was back to full power, rearmed, and on the opposing side. And I think this, this idea of opposing sides and Germany was something that they just couldn't avoid. They could pretend to be friends, if you like. But at the end of the day, you can't hide the fact that you've got Germany a big gun in the middle of the negotiating table and both sides don't want the other to get this gun because they fear that as soon as the other side gets the gun that they will use it and it becomes more and more obvious. It's hard to hide the animosity under these circumstances. Secondly, of course, they've, they've got different ideas about what to do with Germany. 
the USSR wanted reparations in the same way that France wanted reparations after World War I. No problem. The Americans and the West, the British, the French, wanted to re, well maybe not the French as much, but wanted to rebuild Germany to have a happy, successful trading partner that one, wasn't going to return to communism, and two, wasn't going to repeat the mistakes of the Treaty of Versailles and lead to yet another, um, what you might call, revenge mission. They didn't want to create too much anger. Okay, so they have got different ideas about what to do, to, what to do with Germany. One side wanted it ruined, so it could never be a threat again, and they wanted to extract reparations. The other side wanted it built up to make a capitalist trading partner and maybe an ally against the Russians. If the USSR is taking money out for reparations and America is pumping money in, well, really you get a situation where America is just throwing money at the USSR. And as much as the USSR wanted help from America, they wanted loans, they didn't want to annoy America because they needed their help for rebuilding. Can't remember what I was gonna say. America certainly didn't want to be paying the USSR. It didn't want to help them. This was very obvious when it canceled Lend-Lease right at the end of the war and lost a Russian application for loans from the United States. So what to do with Germany? Whose side is it going to be on? This is most obviously a question which complicates things. It makes obvious that the two sides are wary of each other and that they are, especially for the Americans, enemies. And then what to do with Germany? Break it up and extract reparations or build it back up. You could not do both. Could not do both. So this was the problem with Germany. And you need to understand Stalin's fear in order to understand the Berlin blockade. So Stalin had got a fear of a united Germany, a rebuilt Germany, under Western influence, capitalist, anti-communist, anti-Soviet, turned on the USSR. So this is the background to the 1948 Berlin blockade and air. Right, coffee time. Okay, so we know the context, we know the background, the fear and distrust um, behind this. But what triggered Stalin's reaction, considering he did not want to annoy the United States? What made Stalin block off access to Berlin? Well, again it comes down to fear. And the creation of, the creation of a zone called Bisonia and the introduction of a new currency was enough to make Stalin panic Fearing a united Germany under Western control, he did his best to try and stop this. And then he took the rather bold and what you might consider aggressive move to close off Berlin, to try, yes, to try to force the Western Allies out of Berlin to try to prevent the reunification of, of Germany, the, the creation of West Germany under. US influence, anti-communist, facing Russia. By the way, I'm here, Eric Kayser, the, the lifeblood of uh, the French expat community here and home of, of, of soulful bread, to be honest with you. Um, it's a guilty pleasure, I shouldn't really eat bread, but I have to come here because it's a soul saver. Eric Kayser. And also a big shout out to Fiona, uh, an extreme to mine who I've just seen. Hello Fiona. Apart from the creation of Bisonia, 
and the introduction of a new currency which was uh, a step towards creating a unified Western Germany. There's also, look, if I float the map of Germany next to me here, massive effect, um, you'll see as well that, look, Berlin was an outpost of capitalism in the middle of a sea of communism. And if the Americans, if the Americans didn't like Cuba to be in their zone of influence, it would also be natural that Stalin would not like a capitalist outpost in the middle of a communist sea. So that's also something to consider, the unnatural geopolitical situation of Berlin within Eastern Germany. Another reason why Stalin would want the West out. I don't believe, I don't think there's any evidence to say that this was stage one in Soviet expansionism. It's a fact for you. The USSR had reduced its troop numbers from 12 million to 3 or 4 million by 1949. This is not the action of a country that's intending to do any conquering or invading. But it's not that the communists hadn't said that they um, didn't want to take over the world in a way they communism was about spreading communism around the world so we can't really blame people for being suspicious of the communists trying to spread their power around the world it's just that the facts are that militarily they were in no position to and Stalin was not going to invade Europe simple as that and as bad as uh, Tsar Nicholas's government was in Russia the communists came, the Bolsheviks the communists came to power with with great violence and so it's easy to understand why there was a fear of communist Russia at the time. But as I said, they were in no position at that point to do any invading, any conquering or anything like this. They did want to spread their influence. There was mutual distrust from both sides. This is true. But when it comes down to it, I think the trigger, we've got the long-term causes, ideology, um, distrust, what to do about Germany is a... Um, more shorter term issue this is really the catalyst and then the next catalyst the the, the real trigger is the creation of Bisonia and then the introduction of this new currency if you remember Terminator 2 it's the one with the liquid Terminator um, he gets blown up see that as Germany gets splattered and then he comes back together again rather scarily in little bits until he joins together or little bits of liquid come together and then eventually <laughs> that scary Terminator comes back you could probably see Stalin visualizing this Germany had been beaten at awful and great terrible cost the Soviet Union had lost 90 people to the United States is one and the war had been fought on their territory they saw a rearmed Germany, a Western um, influenced Germany, a hostile Germany as an extremely scary thing. To face Germany and the United States and Britain at the same time would have been something that they found rather worrying. So this introduction of Bisonia, which was the joining of the British and the American zones together, and the French in the end, um, and then introducing a new currency. Well, this looks like a new country. This looks like a new country. The West are going ahead and they are going to rebuild Germany like this as a Western ally. And so Stalin figures that his way to try to stop it is to put pressure on and to force the Allies out of East Berlin. Definitely say that the Berlin airlift established that the Cold War now was on in the public eye and this is one of the important results. If you're studying for GCSE then just, just write down 
that um, NATO was formed as a result um, of this Cold War becoming a much more open and public confrontation. It'll get you marks, it just might not be true. If that was 100% true, why did the French kick NATO headquarters out of France? They felt it was a somewhat different arrangement, NATO. It's up for interpretation. Well, S Stalin knew. I mean, Stalin knew. He just knew that, in a way, that he was just making himself look bad. Maybe that was part of it as well. It's pretty funny, really, in a, in a way. Um, Stalin is made to look like some <laughs> bad character from WWE or something like this. He's gone from being Uncle Joe to horrible big bad Stalin and the West doing this um, Berlin airlift is absolute brilliant propaganda for them and absolutely appalling for Stalin and the Russians. Look at those photos, look at that beautiful propaganda victory dropping milk to children that Stalin is, is, uh, is, is denying, <laughs> it's worse than Mrs Thatcher denying milk to the children. He's trying to starve out the Berliners. What a bad man. What a bad man. It's just only if not long before, I mean, everyone was dropping bombs on them. But, um, oh, there you go. Um, the result of all of this being, uh, the Cold War is now in the open. It's an open confrontation between the two sides. Stalin and the Russians suffer a propaganda defeat and it's said, and I'll just say this, it's said that NATO was then formed to protect Europe from a Russian threat now that the Cold War was now in the open. This, this is up for interpretation. As I said, the U USSR um, had reduced its armed forces down to a quarter or a third of their size by the time the um, Berlin blockade was finished. So, so there. Okay, so having lost my beard somewhere along the way and having a face like a baby's ass, um, we will just quickly, before we go, go one more time through causes. Quickly what happened. And results of the Berlin blockade. Hum. Here we are, this is Johnny in a Levi's top. Right. And guess where he's from? Guess where he's born? Here is the Sarma. Soviet, <laughs> Un Soviet Union. Soviet <laughs> Union. He's good for a bit, there's no need for nuclear weapons. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Mate, cheers, cheers, dude. Cheers, bro. Later on. Love, 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 man.